Hey everybody, thanks a lot for tuning in to blackink.tv. My name is Tony Beeman, your host, and we're here to inspire the next generation of black entrepreneurs to think bigger and bigger and go for it. Now our first guest is Mr. Keith Spears, who definitely embodies that entire uh, think bigger, go for it. He has inspired me. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Keith, thank you very much for, for joining us today. And um, I'd like to go ahead and just get every, get go ahead and get started. You know, Keith, can you tell us a, a little bit about yourself, how you got into impact investing, and what is impact investing? Yeah, th thanks for the opportunity, Tony. It's great to uh, be here chatting with you. Um, you know, just from a, a background perspective, I think it's important for people to know I'm uh, I'm from New York City, born and raised in the South Bronx. It was just uh, me and my mom growing up, I never really knew my dad. So, um, and the South Bronx was uh, a tough place to grow up. And uh, I think very early in my life, I knew I wanted to have an impact on areas like the South Bronx, right? And so my mom really stressed the importance of education. So I went to Bronx High School of Science and Brown University, where I studied economics and, and urban studies. And then I went to Yale Law School and Stanford Business School. And um, I really developed at an early age an appreciation for finance and the importance of finance in terms of helping to build companies, um, helping to think about mergers, acquisitions, how to strategically grow a business, basically. And so, um, and at, at some point in my career, I had the opportunity to work at a firm called Hamilton Lane, and which is one of the biggest allocators of private equity capital in the world about $750 billion. And there I really got introduced to the concept of impact investing. And impact investing means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, for me, it means investing with um, folks that has historically not had access to capital. So mm. people of color, mm. women, um, these are groups that historically just haven't had the capital to help grow their businesses. So. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really am focused on those types of opportunities, anything that's really good for the environment, education, health, wellness, um, those types of opportunities as well. Um, when I was at Hamilton Lane, I managed a big pool of capital uh, for CalPERS, one of the leading pension plans in the country. CalPERS, we invested, wow. Yeah, we invested $550 million uh, throughout the state of California. We invested in I think it was uh, ultimately 240 companies that did 104 billion in sales, oh employed 120,000 people, and all of that. A lot of that money went into low, moderate income areas. Um, a lot of them supported women or minorities at the C-suite level, and that's that was really the turning point. That really got me hooked on invest on impact investing, and ever since I've been working with groups to help them raise capital uh, and deploy capital with folks that look like us. That is incredible. I mean, some of the numbers that you threw out, you know, 750 billion and then 550 million in investing, um, over 100,000 jobs created. That is, that's, that, that's, mind, that's mind boggling. Well, what are you up to now, Keith? Well, what I'm up to now is I'm a, a general partner at Include Ventures. Um, and so at Include Ventures, we're kind of tackling some of these big impact at scale issues. So uh, fundamentally, there's about $70 trillion in the financial market, <laughs> and, and only 1.3% are managed by women or people mm. of color. And so what we're trying to do at Include Ventures is to raise $250 million, prudently mm -hmm. deploy that capital with diverse management teams, with management teams led by women, and hmm. demonstrate that we can get a great rate of return. And so that more wow. capital will come into black and brown communities or uh, companies that are supported by women, that type of thing. And so that's what we're focused on. Uh, we're very excited about that. We're, you know, we've gotten really good interest from uh, institutional investors, endowments, foundations, hmm. and the like. And so we're cautiously optimistic that we'll have a first close in this quarter and then we can move forward to begin 
deploying that capital. There's a lot of data out there uh, that demonstrates that diverse management teams perform mm -hmm. better. And it just makes sense, mm -hmm. right? The more diversity, perspective, and viewpoints you have, you would expect that those uh, opportunities are going to do better financially. And that's the data is there. And so we want to mm -hmm. um, generate what we call alpha. Alpha just means outperformance of the market. We want to generate alpha by investing with these diverse management teams. And so that's what we're up to right now. That is incredible. You know, I mean, like I can talk to you all day because the, the, the more you speak, the more inspired I personally become. Um, what would you say that success in your perspective kind of looks like? Yeah, so I think for, for us, you know, we feel as though we have the best job in the world, right? Every day we talk to super talented entrepreneurs, fund managers, founders of companies, um, about what they're up to. And um, a lot of these are changing the world. And so what success looks like to me is that we do a great job investing this capital. We get more capital to deploy and we mm -hmm. invest in companies that are not only having impact in our local communities in Oakland, mm -hmm. where you and I live, or, you know, the South Bronx where I'm from, but on a global scale, right? And so mm -hmm. the we can make these connections between uh, companies here, companies in Africa, companies in Latin America, um, and really help sure. investors see and prove that you, we can not only invest money, but we can do uh, the right thing. We can actually generate huge impact and huge metrics that show great financial performance, but also great impact. If we can do that, that's a game changer. Uh, that creates inspiration for others who look like us to kind of get out there uh, start their own companies, knowing that there's mm -hmm. capital now to support them in what they're doing. So that's what success looks like uh, from my perspective. Keith, you had mentioned earlier about the lack of access to capital for, for women and minorities. I mean, that's something that as an entrepreneur, I personally have experienced. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about that and, and what, what, from your perspective and your background and, and maybe some of the things that, you, that you're trying to do about it? Yeah, so I think it, it, it uh, it's something that um, I've seen throughout my entire career, right? I've been uh, fortunate enough to work at firms like Goldman Sachs and Credit Suisse and Merrill Lynch and and um, and the like. And I think oftentimes I'm the only person of color in the room, or there's very limited women in the room. And uh, yeah. and um, when when that happens, what what you see is that from a decision making perspective. Uh, folks that look like us or that are slightly different, um, um, there's almost like a, a blind spot, if you will, right? Uh, people are used to mm -hmm. working with people that they know, people that they're comfortable with, people that have had success in the past, that they're, that they're um, and so if, if it doesn't look like that, like it's right, right down the middle of the fairway for them, um, they, they, it's hard for them to adjust or see opportunities elsewhere, right? And so what that means for folks, um, uh, people of color and, and women is that, um, you know, we, we don't get the same um, review, right? We don't get the same opportunities that others may get in terms of uh, accessing capital. And, and as you know, as an entrepreneur, I know as an entrepreneur, um, um, that can be harmful to your business, right? It's, it's one oh, thing yes. to uh, try to be competitive and be thoughtful mm -hmm. and strategic, but if you don't have the same access to capital to help drive your business, it's extraordinarily difficult to really grow um, yes. uh, per se. So, um, you know, one of the things that uh, we're, we're doing at Include Ventures is trying to fix that broken supply chain of capital, right? So you've got mm -hmm. these big pension plans, endowments, foundations, insurance companies, banks. Um, there's this layer here of kind of allocators of capital, which is Include Ventures. There's not a whole lot of folks that look like us in that layer. And then you have mm -hmm. the fund managers that we allocate capital to, and then they invest in the underlying portfolio of companies, right? So that supply chain mm -hmm. of capitals is broken in the sense that there's not representation, there's not diversity throughout all elements of it. And so what we're trying to do is um, create an ecosystem where we can play that prominent role in the middle of that um, supply chain and allow capital to flow into companies led by people of color uh, or mm -hmm. women, and so that they have the same opportunities, they can grow their businesses, uh, that type of thing. And if, you know, for us, success looks like, um, you know, being able to 
uh, create those entrepreneurial opportunities, on ownership opportunities, and growth opportunities by providing that access to capital. Wow, Keith, uh, you, you mentioned a lot, you know, that I can also um, really relate to as far as being the only one in the room. Uh, yeah, I experienced that a lot in my corporate career as well. You, with you being an impact investor now, what, what kind of challenges does that also present um, with, with being yeah. you know, an impact investor and maybe being the only one in the room trying to create that ecosystem that you mentioned? Yeah, I, I, so um, I think the, the biggest, uh, there are a number of challenges, right? Um, just, you know, the limited access to capital is one, right? Where people have preconceived notions about you know, what an investor looks like, what an impact investor looks mm -hmm. like, what, um, um, uh, and so I think that's a big challenge is we're talking to investors and trying to that's break down those barriers and those blind spots that we're talking about um, and trying to convey a message that, look, w we have the track record, we know what we're doing, we have the relationships, we can do the due diligence, the vetting of these opportunities. And, and trying to, you know, uh, convince them to work with us, right? So I think that's the number one challenge. And it's all mm. predicated on relationships, right? Because mm -hmm. if you know someone, you feel good about working with them. So you start with the folks that you have a pre-existing relationship with, you build on that relationship, you convey to them confidence in your ability to execute, and then ultimately they'll um, work with you. And then hopefully that'll allow you to get additional opportunities. So that's kind of the, the first thing, the first kind of hurdle that we're, uh, you know, grappling with, right? Yes, I think sir. the second thing that we're grappling with is this perceived notion about impact investing. Uh, in my field in uh, financial services, there's a perception that if you do impact investing, that means you're doing philanthropy or you're not getting the same kind of rate mm. of return mm -hmm. from a traditional investment, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we need to be able to demonstrate is that, look, we can make great investments um, in education, climate, health and wellness, the gamut, mm -hmm. financial access, and generate great returns by doing that, right? And so, um, you know, for, for us, as we evaluate investment opportunities, we're looking at what kind of impact at scale will those investment opportunities have? Uh, we're looking at That's how right. large the ecosystem is that the, that the entrepreneur or the fund has so that they can have a larger impact. And we fundamentally mm. believe the larger the scale, the larger mm -hmm. the impact, the greater the potential return. And if we can prove that, I think we'll be able to attract more capital. So those are the two things uh, that uh, are challenging. Uh, and I think the third thing I would actually highlight is that, you know, when you're in this business and you're talking to people on a daily basis, it's mm -hmm. amazing how many great opportunities you see, right? And so it's, <laughs> yeah. like, it's like meeting after meeting, like today I've got like 24 <laughs> Zoom calls, right? But uh -huh. everyone is compelling. Everyone is um, exciting, um, passionate about what they're doing, knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And so as an investor, you got to sift through all of that and figure out, okay, you know, how do you allocate the capital if you have all these great opportunities, <laughs> right? Because these opportunities have been starved for capital for so long. Yeah. So oh now gosh. you're saying like, oh my goodness, uh, you know, so that's the <laughs> third uh, uh, thing is, you know, how do you make that investment decision, right? And and, and unfortunately, we can't invest in everything, right? You know, but what we try to do is we try to be helpful to everyone. So, you know, I'm an advisor to you, as you know, and, um, oh, and yes. other uh, companies led by minorities or women or veterans. Um, uh, and, and to the extent we cannot invest, we always spend the time with them to say, okay, we can't invest. Here's some constructive feedback. Here are uh, things that you should be thinking about. And here are some others that may be interested in what you're doing. So we our motto is that we can't invest in everyone, but we can be helpful to everyone. And so that's what we endeavor to do. And that creates a good ecosystem. And so for the next deal, they'll think about working with us. So that's what we try to do. Oh, my goodness, Keith. This is incredibly exciting. You know, it seems like, would you say that it, uh, from, from your perspective, uh, the, the, the timing of, of being a woman or my or minority black entrepreneur um, compared to times in the past, it's, it seems like at least for me that it's mm -hmm. the, the time is now and it's a good time. What what what, what would you say? Yeah, I I, I would agree with you. Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of um, government um, uh, programs uh, that are out there that are kind of encouraging mm -hmm. more entrepreneurs. Um, 
whether it's contracts or finance or whatever. Uh, there's a lot in the private sector. Um, uh, all the endowments and foundations that we talk to are very focused on diversity and impact and closing the wealth gap. There's a huge wealth gap in, the, in this country between you know, white Americans and African American, Latinx. And so um, there's That's definitely right. that, that impetus, which we see on a daily basis. So our story resonates with people, which is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's um, a, a shift in the mindset of folks that look like us that say, you know, uh, we see all the venture companies that are doing well, excelling, and we've got great ideas. Mm -hmm. And we just, um, so we, we see a lot of people who are coming to us with either funds uh, that are new established or companies that are, that they just founded that are really great ideas and built on solid foundations and with great teams. Right. And so, uh, yeah, no, I definitely see a shift. So I think from my perspective, it's um, very, very exciting time. No question about it. And I think if I'm a, I, I would love to be, you know, 30 years younger, quite frankly, and be at this <laughs> yeah. point in time yeah. where you have all these opportunities um, uh, before you to kind of really take advantage. So uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Keith, thank you. Thank you so much for, for taking the time. You, as always, you've inspired me. I appreciate you being an advisor to me as well. I wanted to say that publicly. And I definitely hope you can uh, join us again sometime in the near future because we can talk all day about so many things that, that I know you, uh, our viewers would be inspired by. But ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you again, Keith, for, for, for joining us. Um, please check us out next time on blackink.tv. Hit me up on LinkedIn. My, my link's going to be here at the bottom of the page. And that's it for today. Hey. Thanks for joining us on Black Ink Talk TV. We'll see you next time.